penny for him. Hmm? They're worth a penny. A penny? You can't afford them. Don't tell me you know what it's all about, Brian, because you don't. I've been a young girl. I've had these crushes. I know how dangerous they can be. God, give me strength. How many more times? There never was anything. And even if there was, it's finished. It is now. What have you done? What do you mean it is now? I've told Rita. You what? She's a foster mother. She'll have to stop us. Listen to you. You're at it again. Stop what for God's Ryan, sake? I'm not having it. I'm not having a young girl following you around every minute that God sends, wearing your picture in a locket. You're my husband, Brian. Why, you wouldn't think so. You don't trust me, do you? We could have sorted this out ourselves without Drag It Rest at Worlding. Oh, no, we couldn't. Why not? Go on, tell me, why not? Because I don't think you're capable. That's why not. He's not a bad old stick when you get to know him, you know. Which is just as well seen as how he lives next door. <laughs> he was dead chuff when I brought those pigeons back for him, you know. How the hell he lives with that fierce woman, I don't know, though. I think, is she going to move in with him? What? Am I talking to myself? What do you say? Oh, forget it. Hey, come on, Dully Daydream. I want you down the yard today. There's some sorting out to do. Oh, no, you don't. There's some sorting out what's doing here. I'm not going in this morning. I'm going to hoover this place from top to bottom. She can help me shift furniture. Suit yourself. Oh, aye, that uh, shower still wants fixing. I scolded myself again last night. Ah, you reminded me, yeah. I've got that washer from Pickering's. I'll do it well, I think. I'll... Oh, leave it, Len. Get yourself off to the yard. What is it with you women? You've been on to me to do that shower ever since we moved in. Now that I get the opportunity... <laughs> well, go on, then. Do it. Then get from under my feet. Oh, no, time, you pick. I can't do right for doing wrong, mate, can I? <laughs> <laughs> They're all right, fellas. There's a lot to be said for them. Too much at times. <laughs> Sentimental journey, oh. <clears throat> oh, sentimental journey. Do you know, it takes me right back to the tower ballroom every time I think of it. <laughs> You'll get taken back to the tower's roof there, you. Go on, you're only jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right, ladies? Oh, fine, thanks, Mrs Walker. Fred isn't doing one of his disappearing tricks, is he? No, he's down the cellar. Oh, that's more pleasant than Bessie's shop. <laughs> Do you know, for a minute, I thought she was going to give us hand with the dusting. Sure, that'll be the day. <laughs> <laughs> nice seeing that stepdaughter of yours again. You're talking to me? Your stepdaughter, Debbie, isn't it? I say it was nice to see her again. Oh, I'm glad you think so. She's a bonny girl. She's a cheeky young devil. Oh, well, they are at that age, aren't they? Uh, how's you, miss, did she say? She's living. Um, not very forthcoming, is it? Well, it is his business, Hilda. If he wants to keep it to himself, I mean, he can, you know. Why does everybody think you're nosing just because you ask a few questions? I'm only showing a bit of interest, that's all. Mm. Be a poor world if you couldn't show a bit of interest in your friends and neighbours. Wouldn't it, Mrs Walker? Wouldn't what, Mrs Hilton? I say it'd be a poor world if you couldn't show a bit of interest in your neighbours. Hmm. I suppose it depends, really, what the reason is for your interest, doesn't it? I mean, if it is a desire to help, then it would be a poor world. But if it's merely curiosity, who are we talking about? Well, Fred. I was saying he's been a bit on the quiet side since that stepdaughter of his come in last night. Well, from what I know of Fred's marital affairs, I would prefer a little silence. <laughs> now, what did I come here for? Oh, I've no idea, Mrs Walker. Was it the post? It was, Mrs Ogden. They are. I'm psychic, aren't I? <laughs> well, where is it? Oh, there isn't none. I've seen him walk past. Oh, good. That means no bills anyway. Great. Uh, Fred, <laughs> you did say Eunice was all right. I mean, it wasn't bad news about her health. Look, Hilda, just to put you in the picture and to stop you having a brainstorm, I'll tell you. I know that fellow Critchley that Eunice ran off with. Well, he's been knocking her about and they expect Muggins here to go and sort him out. Oh, Fred, is that right? Well, that's what I'm told, Mrs Walker. Well, you'll have to do something, Fred. Oh, I don't have to do anything. I didn't push her into this. She knew what she was doing because I told her. That's one thing she can't say. She can't mm. say I didn't flip in, tell her. I'm sorry, Mrs Walker. No, but do preserve your sense about this. I mean, don't give way to your feelings. Well, you know the score, Mrs Walker. I owe them nothing. Not a thing. Oh, dear. You know, when you hear something like that and you read all the divorce figures, it makes you realise how few men and women really can live happily together. Mm. 
I must have been very lucky. Me as well. I've got a lot to be thankful for, and all. I mean, we'd only spoil another couple, me and Stan, bless us. Oh, Hilda. <laughs> I've done it. I said I've done it. He's done it. What? He's done it. Oh, about time too. So is it all right by you two if I go and make a quid or two? Yeah, you go and do that. Well, isn't it marvellous? That's all the thanks again. Well, blow you next time. You can fix it yourself. <laughs> oh, poor Len. Sit down. I thought we were sweeping floor. It can wait. Sit down. <gasps> no, what have I done? Quite a lot, according to a visitor I had last night. Do you know what I'm talking about? I can guess. Told you the whole story, has she? Or uh, just a bit of it? I don't know, but I intend to find out. One thing I'll tell you for a start. When a married woman comes to me and tells me my foster daughter's been pestering her husband, I don't think it's particularly funny. So none of your clever stuff. We'll talk about this seriously, because as far as I'm concerned, it's a serious matter. Is that what she said? I've been pestering her husband? Not the only thing she said. You had a picture of him in a locket, didn't you? Well, so? I know a girl has had a picture of Prince Charles in a locket, but Diana didn't come round complaining. I've told you, madam. If you want me to treat you like an adult, start behaving like one. Now, let's hear your side of it. Well, is there any point? I mean, would you believe me? I don't know, Sharon. So far, I've only heard Gail's version. And much as I like the girl, and I do like her, I know how some women exaggerate over their husbands. I'm saying myself. So, until I've heard both sides of it, I'm keeping an open mind. Or haven't you got one? Oh, yes, I've got one. It's just not easy to put into words, though, is it? We love each other and that's all there is to it. It's a big word, love. Yes, I know it's a big word and I know it's the right one and all. And just in case you're interested, it was Brian who started it. How do you mean? You know, with looks and smiles and that. And then he got me babysitting and then he took me home in his van and he couldn't wait to kiss me goodnight. He likes being with me. Has he said that? Well, he pretends he doesn't, but he does, I can tell. And don't tell me I can't, cos I can. So that's as far as it's got. A good night kiss. Nothing else. Hey, me! I've done my brother's trick for getting me tools. Hey, make us a brew while I'm here, will you? Thank you. You'll never know now, will you? Come in. Oh, Fred, would you do me a favour? I've got a suit at the cleaners. Could you pick it up for me? Oh, yeah. Is it uh, the one next to Piggott's? The one you took it to, yes. Well, well, will it be open at dinner time, Mrs Walker? Fred, I wouldn't ask you if they weren't open. Yes, Mrs Walker. Um, oh, hello, Mrs. Walker. It's Eunice G. Oh, yes, Mrs. G. Is Fred there by any chance? No, I'm afraid he isn't. I've just sent him out on an errand. Oh, well, would you ask him to ring me at my father's? He knows the number. Yes, I'll do that, Mrs. G. Oh, Mrs. Walker, um, I hate to ask you this, but it is important. I would appreciate it if you could persuade him to ring. You know, just in case. I'll do what I can, Mrs. G. Goodbye. I do for you? Well, I've just brought this magazine for Mr. Sykes. Is he about? No, he's out on a run. Oh, well. Let's drop it on the bench over there. Right. It's quite a little hive of industry, isn't it? It's when we're working, yeah. <laughs> you know, I know this will sound silly to say, I mean, me being so feminine, but when I was a girl, I always wanted to ride a motorbike. I can't think why. Well, I can actually, because there was this dirt track rider lived in the next street to ours. And we used to race at Bellevue. I mean, he was sort of a local hero. Of course, we all wanted to ride motorcycles, boys and girls alike. Better look next time. Mm. Oh, here's your wife. Caught you with another woman. 
It's all right, Mavis. She trusts me. Oh, sure, she does. <laughs> well, <laughs> bye now, then. I said she trusts me. I heard what you said. I brought you sandwiches. Great. Give me a chance to check up on me. I just brought you sandwiches. Told anybody else, have you? Put it in the Gazette. I don't think I'm enjoying this, Brian. Yes. What have you only got a house for? Well, every little helps. We're not going to furnish a house on the difference between the odd half and pint. Don't turn your nose up at me little contributions. I'm going to surprise you one of these days. I'm going to say, do you know how much I've saved from drinking halves? £2,500. And I'm only 73, so if you still want me now... <laughs> you daft thing. No, seriously, though, how are we doing? Well, providing you don't want nothing fancy like Woburn Abbey, we've got to deposit on a middling sort of house. Well, especially these days. I mean, they're banging on your door, offering you 100% mortgages. Yeah, maybe. But I don't want to go into marriage in debt for the rest of our lives. I want to put a deposit down and I want my own furniture. And you shall have it. Just not this week, that's all. <laughs> the dry cleaning, Mrs Walker. Thank you, Fred. Now, before you go, Eunice has been on. She wants to meet you and she says that you can get in touch with her at her father's. Well, I'm not meeting her there. I'm never going to set foot in that flipping place again. Then you can meet her here. You can sort out your differences in this room, but sort them out you must. I will not have the smooth running of this public house disrupted by any more of your family squabbles. Well, they are my squabbles, Mrs. Walker. And you are my employee, and I have a vested interest in your peace of mind. So, whatever the problems are, sort them out, and then concentrate on your work. Yes, Mrs. Walker. There is no time like the present, Fred. Oh, Eunice. It's Fred here. I understand he wanted to speak to me some of Just inside the garage door. Yes, I can stick a tap there for you. Oh, well, if I get this job finished that I'm on now, if I get it done early, it'll be about half eleven. No, a failure in that will be around about half past three. No, I'm sorry. No. Well, it could be sometime next week. No. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll see you sometime tomorrow, eh? All right. Yeah, see you then. Sit down. Hey, did I finish that cup of tea? Just one in pot if you still want one. No, don't matter. I'll save me thirst till I get. Uh, I said I'd go down to the uh, the Legion with Alf for a couple of hours. Uh, hey, where are you Come in, it's a shop. Oh, it's only me. I've uh, come to see if you've got any evening news. Mine hasn't arrived again. It's that little hard greaves, lad. I'm sure he's sticking them down the grid. Well, you tell him. I'm sick and tired of telling him. You just want to look then? Yes, love. I just want to see what's on. Ooh. Hello, hello. I'll phone phone again, are we? Oh, being well, yes. Oh, why? Is this this fellow we've been hearing about? What's his name? Jeff. You know, you want to watch it, kid. If he as much as move a muscle round here, tongues are wagging. Yeah, I've noticed. Not married, is he, this new bloke? Do you know, I forgot to ask him. But then I always did, didn't I? <laughs> I like their medical programmes myself, you know. They're very instructional. Oh, there was a lovely operation the other night. You seen them go right inside this fella's stomach. Would oh, you mind, Elder? What's up with you? It's only the human body. We've all got one. Now you shutting your eyes to it. There's miracles inside here. Yes, and there's my dinner inside here, so can we change subject? Mm. It's uh, Only one word. Evening, Mr Tatlock. Oi, what do you want? Oh, you, as a matter of fact. As you know, Ken and Deirdre are out for the day. Oh, right, well, they're telling me. I'll have them. No. Yes, I know. Only I thought, rather than make your own meal, would you like to share with me? I've made a steak and kidney pie, and there's far too much for one. 
Do you make your crust on top or do you make it separate? Well, normally I make it on top, but I must confess this oh, well, time... Well, I like mine done on top. Yes, I'm sure. You don't get your meat out of a tin, do you? No, it's all fresh. Only, if you're interested, would you give me a quarter of an hour to finish off and then come round? All right, go on. Well, it's very good of you. I know. I'm settled in here. But, of course, if you're desperate for a bit of company, I don't... Quarter of an hour, then. I don't know why we bother. <laughs> Me neither. Fred, Fred, your miles off, lovely. All oh, right. There's trouble there. How do you mean? That wife of his, she's pestering him again. Oh. Talk of it, dear. Evening. Mrs. Evening. G, would you come through? Fred won't be a moment. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. You stay here. I wouldn't dream of doing anything else. Uh, can I have St. Clement's, please? Oh, and just in case you don't know where it is... I put... know what a St. Clement's is, lovely. You know that fella she run off with, that Critchley? Been knocking her about, according to Fred. Give her a couple of black eyes, by the looks of them. I'm not surprised all That bottle's half full. It's this pump that's dove. Uh, she's in the back. Is she? Waiting for you. Well, she'll have to wait, won't she? I've got work to do. It's very good of you to let us use your living room, Mrs. Walker. Yes. I just hope, whatever the matter is, that you can settle it pretty quickly. I don't want Fred having worries hanging over his head. Neither do I, but these things happen. Do they? Come in. Right, I'll leave you then. And I hope that you won't keep him too long. I won't, Mrs. Walker. And thanks again. Hello, Fred. Well, come to the point, you and as you heard what she said. I... I'm very unhappy. Well, I'm not surprised. God knows I warned you. Oh, come on. We all make mistakes. And we learn to live with them and all, don't we? We don't drag other folks in. Could I have a glass of water, please? and I'm pointing to folks out this front garden. Look, I've had just about enough of you. I've told you I'm serious. And I'm serious and all. Not only one us can be serious, you know. Well, I'll show you. You can get upstairs and you can wash that muck off your face <laughs> and you can get out of them clothes. You're stopping until you see sense. I am not. You are not seeing him again. You're not going round to the garage and you're not hanging round waiting for him. You just try and stop me. I intend to. You think he's just a daft crush, don't you? Well, I'll tell you something. Just because a man's married with a kid don't mean to say he can't fall in love. You ask him, he'll tell you. He'll tell you he loves me. I'm not listening to you. You are not seeing him again. Now get that into your head once and for all. I'm telling you. And who are you to tell me anything? I'm responsible for you, you silly little devil. I'm your foster mother. Yeah, and a fine one and awful one I've heard. You lived over at Brush with a married fella long enough, didn't you? <laughs> You're all the same, you lot. One law for me and another for the rest of you. Well, blow you. I love Brian and he loves me. And you are not stopping me from seeing him again. Not you or anybody. <laughs> nice one, Rita. What do you expect me to do, Eunice? Go around there and black his eyes for him. No, no, I don't. Look, I had my bags all packed ready to leave and when he found out, he went mad. He started hitting me again. So I ran out into the street. He wouldn't let me go back for my cases. So you expect me to go down there and get him? Well, he listened to a man. Is that all? That's all I can ask of you, Fred. Look, Eunice, what if he turns nasty? I can't just go in there and get your gear and walk out again, can I? I know. Look, I've, I've got to get on, Eunice. You know what Mrs Walker's like. I... Look, I'll ring you in the morning at your old fellas, let you know what time I'm coming round. Well, that's if I can get the car. Thank you. She's uh, looking very well, your mother. <laughs> She having trouble with her eyes, though? You know, got to wear the dark glasses. Still, it's very common, isn't it? There's a lot of people can't stand the sun, even in November. <laughs> yeah, there are, aren't there? And then you'll get those that wouldn't dream of wearing them, in case they miss something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're taking the time in there, aren't they? They're in the hurry to get away. Well, I am, actually. 
Well, look, dear, why not go through to the living room and see if your mother's ready to leave? Thanks, Straight thank you. across the hall. I have a feeling that this little scene could go on all night unless we put a stop to it. I'm very grateful, Fred. Well, you needn't be. I've done now, yeah. Well, you coming, or aren't you? I'm supposed to be meeting Des at half seven, you know. Yes, I'm coming. Well, she wants to get rid of us as well. That's why she sent me through. I said I was coming. Well, then, what's Sir Lancelot got to say for himself? You can shut up, you, you cheeky young devil. Yes, well, you just watch what you're saying. He's been very good. He's going round to the hotel in the morning. Oh, well, give him a good thump on from me. I'm thumping nobody. There's not going to be no aggro for you, so I'm telling you. I told you he'd jump on his white horse, didn't I? Will you be quiet? It's very good of him to do anything. It's flipping unusual. Look, young lady, I'm not doing this for you. If I was doing it for you, you'd go and flipping tickle, I'm oh, telling you. Come on, let me get you out of here. Thank you, Fred. I'll ring you in the morning, eh? <laughs> that I can't wait to see. Come on. So, just thought I'd come and tell you how she's behaving. Not come to blame anybody. I should hope not. She's only here to help, Brian. I know. I know what to you with flaming elf. I'm off out for a quiet drink and I get this. Look, if there any other way of going about it, I wouldn't be here. I'm not enjoying this, you That's know. That's what I keep telling him. None of us are. Oh, and you think I am? You think you enjoy it when the pair of you believe every word that girl says? No, we don't. It's written all over your flaming faces. Any daft ideas that girl's got in her head? She didn't get them from me. Look, we're not... Hang on, I haven't finished yet. You're a foster mother, right? You're responsible for her. So tell her. I've told her. I've told her till I'm blue in the face. Now calm down, Brian. She won't take it from me. She thinks we're all against her. She said, I've got to ask how you feel. Well, I hope I've left you in any flaming doubt. It's not me you've got to convince. It's her. Right. I'll set her straight. But I'll do it in my own good time. Because if I go around there now, I'm saying it's important. And it isn't. Not to me, it isn't. To me, it's not worth that. That wedding video surfaces again as the soap hour continues in Emmerdale, next on Plus. Thank you.